Starship Troopers is a beloved sci-fi action film that is probably the most well-known satire in popular film discussion. It may be a movie about the space military fighting gross aliens, but if you look deeper, it becomes clear that it's saying a lot more. The director, Paul Verhoeven, is known for making big satirical blockbusters like Robocop, Basic Instinct, and Showgirls, and Starship Troopers is of that same vein. Starship Troopers is satirizing fascist governments and their militarized states, using a straightforward Hollywood plot in order to criticize the illogical way fascists see the world. But when the film was released, as the legend goes, film critics somehow completely missed those satirical elements. They thought the film was actually pro-fascism, even though it's so clearly criticizing it. Isn't that weird? Isn't that just nuts? Those critics, they have no idea what they're talking about. So I want to talk about what critics thought about Starship Troopers when it released. But first, I need to explain what Starship Troopers is about and what it's satirizing. And to do this, I'm going to be borrowing an explanation that I think sums it up pretty well. The premise. Early in the next millennium, mankind is engaged in a war for survival with the bugs. A vicious race of giant insects that colonize the galaxy by hurling their spores into space. If you seek their monument, do not look around you. Bugs have no buildings, no technology, no clothes, nothing but the ability to attack, fight, kill, and propagate. They exist not as an alien civilization, but as pop-up enemies in a space war. Human society recruits starship troopers to fight the bug. Their method is to machine gun them to death. This does not work very well. This doesn't really matter, since the bugs aren't important, except as props for the interminable action scenes, and as an enemy to justify the film's quasi-fascist militarism. Heinlein, the original author, was of course a right-wing saber rattler, but a charming and intelligent one who wrote some of the best science fiction ever. Starship Troopers proposes a society in which citizenship is earned through military service, and values are learned on the battlefield. Heinlein intended his story for young boys, but wrote it more or less seriously. The one redeeming merit for director Paul Verhoeven's film is that by remaining faithful to Heinlein's material and period, it adds an element of sly satire. Paul Verhoeven is facing in the other direction. He wants to depict the world of the future as it might have been visualized in the mind of a kid reading Heinlein in 1956. He faithfully represents Heinlein's militarism, his big brother state, and a value system in which the highest good is to kill a friend before the bugs can eat him. The underlying ideas are the most interesting aspect of the film. This is a great summary of the film's satire. It is, of course, incomplete because Starship Troopers is saying so much over the course of two hours that you can't condense it to just a few paragraphs. Given that restriction, it does a reasonable job explaining what the film is satirizing and how. But it might surprise you that the author doesn't actually like the movie. In fact, this is an excerpt of one of the most famous negative reviews of Starship Troopers. It was written by Roger Ebert, the most famous and influential film critic of all time, writing just after the movie was first released. Despite his recognition that the film is satirical, he still has his issues with it, and ultimately gave it 2 out of 4 stars. So what didn't he like about it? What's lacking is exhilaration and sheer entertainment. Unlike the Star Wars movies, which embrace a joyous vision and great comic invention, Starship Troopers doesn't resonate. It's one-dimensional. This criticism by who is closest to representing critical consensus at the time is that the movie just isn't entertaining. He knew Starship Troopers was a satire, but he disliked it anyway. The critical response, positive or negative, was not largely ignorant to the satirical themes. While some certainly did, it was incredibly atypical. And Ebert wasn't the only one who thought it failed as a movie. Here's Scott Rosenberg's Salon Review. There's nothing wrong with good satire, but it's self-defeatingly stupid to inject it into any story that expects us to care what happens to the characters. Nothing in Starship Troopers carries the conviction of the Force or even Independence Day's rah-rah for mankind idealism. The movie can't commit to the militarism it inherited from Heinlein, and it never finds a different ideal to substitute. In this review, Rosenberg is arguing that Starship Trooper's satire does not excuse its poor character writing, and that good satire should not just critique, but also provide an alternative system to believe in. Now, I don't expect you to agree with either of these points. I don't agree with it, and I think it's a pretty bad review. The lack of character personality adds to the film's critique, and it's okay to criticize fascism even if you don't advocate a specific alternative system. And once we disagree with that premise, the rest of the review just kind of falls apart. But we're not looking for good reviews. We want to see if it accurately recognizes the film as satire. Which it does. 
It just doesn't agree with the way that satire is used. We will see that this is a common criticism with negative reviews at the time. Let's take a look at another example by Richard Schickel at Time Magazine. Starship Troopers contains an unexplored premise. There are two classes in this future world. Civilians who have sacrificed voting privileges for material ease, and warriors who earn the right to rule by their willingness to die for the state. In short, we're looking at a happy fascist world. Maybe that's the movie's final deadpan joke. Maybe it's saying that war inevitably makes fascists of us all. Or, best guess, maybe the filmmakers are so lost in their slam bag visual effects that they don't give a hoot about the movie's scariest implications. Again, we have a recognition that the film is satirical, but he complains that it's not satirical enough and that the message is unclear. That too much focus is given to the action spectacle, that the satire doesn't go as in-depth as it could, and the class dynamics could do with some further examination. This is another common criticism you'll see, that the satire doesn't go far enough. Again, I have some problems with this review, I think the satire is clear and coherent, but this is a reading that I can easily understand. Alright, last one, here's an article by Benjamin Svetke at Entertainment Weekly. It's not technically a review from a film critic, but I think it can shed some light on some popular views on Starship Troopers. Still, some wonder what kind of impact Troopers Nazi subtext will have on those who don't get the joke. For them, isn't Troopers merely an ironic twist on Nazi propaganda, minus the ironic twist? All of those macho guys in black leather and boots. So in my age can't help but make the association with Nazis, says Dr. Will Miller, Nick at Night's resident pop psychotherapist. And to make them the good guys? That's a pretty creepy message for kids, who generally don't have a knowledge of Nazi propaganda film techniques. So in this article, they again recognize the film as satire, and explicitly recognize the Nazi connection. It's not saying the film is pro-fascist or pro-Nazi, but it is arguing that a lot of people are going to read the film in a way that does approve of fascism. And I think even fans of the film will recognize that a lot of people quote, miss the point, and end up seeing it as a comedic celebration instead. The article agrees that Starship Troopers is satire, but is concerned that others won't share that interpretation. And I could keep going and list every review of Starship Troopers I found, but I think that should be enough. You might notice that I haven't really done any analysis so far. I've mostly just been reading a bunch of quotes, it's barely a video essay. The idea that Starship Troopers was completely misunderstood by critics at the time is so wrong and flimsy that all you need to disprove it is the custom range option on Google. But somehow this falsehood has not only survived for decades, but has grown as part of the film's mythos. And I think the reason why is just as simple. Starship Troopers is a movie that has a lot of fans. People love Starship Troopers. And when we're confronted with the fact that so many people didn't like it when it came out, that can be discomforting. We often want to universalize artistic taste, to say that people should recognize and value art in the same way that we do. This is normal, it's part of the reason that art means so much to us and is a centralizing element of culture. But this becomes a problem when that feeling blinds us to the nuances within that culture. The contemporary love for Starship Troopers has effectively rewritten history, making it seem like they just didn't understand it like we do today. And that's simply not true. It's important to understand their criticism as it actually existed, even if you disagree with it. I don't really like any of the reviews in this video, and some of them honestly hurt to read. But I hope that this helps in some way to dispel the myth that people didn't know that Starship Troopers was satire. And if that doesn't work, we can just make up our own. Can you believe that people didn't realize that people realized Starship Troopers was satire? It's true! I'm gonna share that all over the internet without any evidence.